series, 24 victories to 13. The Tech students camped out yesterday, and the line around the gym, four blocks long today. It's a sellout as over 9,000 are jamming in for this big battle in the ACC. Hi again, everybody. I'm Jim Kelly, and welcome. The Blue Devils of Duke, of course, got out of the box very quickly. They won 13 games in a row. Then suddenly, surprisingly, they became snake bit. They were beaten three games in a row, first by North Carolina, then by Wake Forest, and then by North Carolina State. But they've regained their composure. Danny Ferry is back after the bad back injury, and they come in tonight. The Yellow Jackets, though, they've got their work cut out for them because Duke comes in hitting at a 53% clip while holding the opponents to just 41% from the field. Let's check the standings right now in the ACC. The Tar Heels of North Carolina on top, along with the Wolfpack of NC State. And then come the Cavaliers of Terry Holland. Duke next at 4-3. and three. Georgia Tech, this is a turning point in their season. They are 2-2 two and two in the country. My partner, Bill Raftery, is alongside. It's a noisy building here. We talked with Mike Krzyzewski at the shoot-around today. He said something I thought was fascinating. He said the next month doesn't matter as far as wins and losses. He's looking at it as a preseason. How come? And you believe them. I think he means preparation. He's concerned that his club won't be prepared for the NCAA tournament if they don't do certain things to improve their defense. He says he sees things in the defense that are coming back again. So a tough two component for Georgia Tech. And we talk about this game being a critical turning point perhaps for Bobby Kremens and the rambling wreck. He said he's got to get his program turned around. He has to start to do it tonight. Otherwise, he's in big trouble as far as the conference. Well, he's had some tough losses. Maybe they are not believing in themselves. He's got to get him back. He's a master at that. All right, now if Duke is going to win, how about your patented keys to victory? Well, maybe we'll get one right. I think Quinn Snyder is the key guy. Obviously, Danny Furry, an outstanding scorer. But if he can run the show for this club, penetrate, get it to the right people, Take the jump shot when he has it and have that air about himself that he had late last year. Duke could be the winner. All right, Tommy Hammonds, of course, the big gun for Bobby Kremens and Georgia Tech. But how about a key to victory if they're going to pull the upset? Well, folks, if you haven't seen Tommy Hammonds, sit back and enjoy it. He's so tough on the box that if they get him the basketball, I think the judgment he has to make with the double up is whether to take the shot or to kick it off to a free teammate. Tommy Hammonds right there. Is that like saying get Hammond on box and Tech is alive? Well, it's rhythmic, but he is tough down low. Well, the Blue Devils of Duke have not won here in five years. We'll come right back. The Blue Devils and Georgia Tech. But right now, let's go back to the birthday boy. Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. By new Michelob Drive. One taste, and you'll drink it dry. By Nike, who reminds you to just do it. And by the U.S. Marines, we're looking for a few good men. Duke comes in at 14 and 3, 4 and 3 in the ACC. Georgia Tech 12 and 6, 2 and 2 in the ACC. The starting lineups now with the public address announcer John Culver. A junior from Fayetteville, North Carolina, 6 5, number 21, Robert Ricky. And a senior from Boyd, Maryland, 6 10, number 35, Danny Ferry. At center, junior from Kremens in his eighth year. Five winning years in a row here at Georgia Tech. A tough one tonight. The Blue Devils of Duke, the opponent, they're ranked number 12. It's live and it's next. 
Here it comes, the Slam and Jam and Rip Roar and Good Time video. The NBA's dazzling dunks and basketball bloopers. And the only way to get all the fun is free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. See your heroes fly through the air with the greatest of ease and land just about anywhere they please. For 45 minutes of all the right stuff, they'll give it a whirl and give it a heave. And if you hang around long enough, you'll see things you won't believe. Call this number now and get every jump, jam, slip, slide, and slam. You can look high and low, but you won't find a more fantastic show. Call now, and you won't miss out on your free video or the 25th anniversary edition of the famous swimsuit issue. It's an entire issue devoted to 25 years of the best in swimwear. And you'll save almost 50% off the cover price. 25 issues payable in three monthly installments of only $9.89 each. And you can charge it. Call the number on your screen right now to get your free video, the swimsuit issue, and save on Sports Illustrated. United Airlines, from the ground up, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. The last time that the Blue Devils won at Georgia Tech, way back in 1984. In the Cremens era here at home, though, they've won 87% of their games. A good one tonight in the ACC. The Duke Blue Devils, ranked number 12, and the Ramblin' Wreck of Georgia Tech. Hammond's all set to jump it up. Abdulnabi for Duke, and we're underway. The Yellow Jackets. In the backcourt, Dennis Scott, number four. Brian Oliver, number 13. Traditional man-to-man -man by Duke. A lot of down screening. Pop-outs by Georgia Tech. Ricky staying at home on Dennis Scott. He's going to have to. McNeil. First shot. Throws up a brick. They stepped in. They do it beautifully. Caused a miss. Danny Ferry on the left wing. Abdul Nabi goes baseline. Turnaround jumper from six. Won't drop. Rebound. Dennis Scott. Oliver pushes it up. Good luck. Nice dish to McNeil. Oh. Blew the easy one. He was looking to get that block, maybe. That's the only excuse he might have. That's just nerve. Yeah. Trying to ring that bell early. We've played a minute. We're scoreless. Ricky. Man to man. Taken away. The good D. Oliver again brings it across. Got to look for Hammonds when he's free. There is the big gun. Won't drop. And look at that rebound. Scraping it down. Great matchup with Furry and Hammonds playing one another. Danny really has a great feel for the overall game. Furry with a nice pass. Oh. And Bricky stuffs the popcorn popper. And the pass to the correct hand. Danny Furry telling Robert Bricky drop step into the lane. They have five second count. Quinn Snyder pressuring the ball. Something Duke traditionally does beautifully. Very emotional game for these two coaches. They played against each other. When Army played North Carolina, how about that story? Uh, that's a great story. South Carolina. South Carolina. When Bobby was playing, he, Frank McGuire asked him, who are you guarding? I'll finish it after the sequence. Abdul Nabi. Oh. Four nothing. Duke on top. So McGuire, he's going around the locker room, checking with all his players, saying, do you know who your assignment is? Do you know who you're guarding? He goes up to Bobby Kremens. He said, okay, kid, who have you got? And he says, he said, I got the guy whose name I can't pronounce. And, and that, obviously, of course, that was Krzyzewski at the time. Now with success, Mike Krzyzewski. From outside, the first two for Georgia Tech. David Whitmore, the 6'9", out of California, St. Bernard's High School. By the way, Army won that game, 59-45, and both Mike and uh, Bobby remember that game vividly. Bricky won't fall. Got to do a better job inside defense, though. Duke will punish them if they continue to let it get in. Now, Bruce Dalrymple talked about Whitmore. He said David Whitmore is a sensational talent, hasn't arrived yet. He feels he's got tremendous capabilities. Last year with a knee injury, got a red shirt for it, medical red shirt. Look at the help, zoning on Hammonds. Danny Furry almost leaving McNeil alone. See him standing in the three-second lane? McNeil was wide open, didn't take the shot. Oliver loses it. Larry Lembo with the call. A 
are concerned, Bobby Kremens. This game is crucial. He's two and two in the ACC. Well, Bobby's fortunate, Kremens, that Duke has not been able to convert down this end because he's had some good opportunities and didn't nail them. That's a a la oop. <laughs> That's an a la oop. Uh, Danny, a little long on it. Danny Furry. Was remembering Dan Furry and seeing the physical maturing over four years. A little shuffle cut. Scott takes it inside. Good defense by Bill Henderson. He's going to have to dribble, Jim. Inside to McNeil. Whoops it back out the baseline. Hammond. Yes. Oh, that's a tough non-call. They said it was on the floor. You can't hear the whistle with the noise. One of the few times Tom Hammonds has been able to shape up and get the basketball. He holds off a la Abdelnabi beautifully. Look how quick. A little Bernard King type release. So we'll take away the two for Hammonds. The inbound pass and it goes to Georgia Tech. 16.32 left to go in the first half. 4-2 our score. Mike Krzyzewski right there in his eighth year, ninth year at Duke. Five straight NCAA tournament bids. See the philosophy denying even the inbounds pass. A little down and through. Good pump. Off the knee, two turnovers and two trips. Out of sync a little bit, Georgia Tech. Fortunately, only 4-2. Could be worse. Snyder brings it across. We told you at the top, the Blue Devils need a big game from him and obviously from Danny Ferry. Snyder baseline. Little brush screen there. Abdul Nabi sets the pick down low. Ferry starts to penetrate. Sees the floor so well for his size. That's not a typical Danny Ferry play. But at 6, 9, or 10, able to look over the defense. Well, Mike Krzyzewski talked about it, that Ferry a little slow coming back from the back injury, getting back in far shape and in rhythm. Well, he and Bricky missed practices, and that hurt the sink of the club. Ferry leaves McNeil, and McNeil buries it from the free throw line. Do you know how important that is? That may drag Danny Ferry out, and he can't help out on Tommy Hammonds. He'll make him complete a few more, though, before he leaves them. So the junior out of Andrews High School, Johnny McNeil, ties it up at four. The dish to Abdonabi. Bricky picks up the loose ball, takes it inside, and the foul. Pretty active. McNeil with the foul. They, defensively, Dennis Scott fell asleep. Phil Henderson made a back cut, couldn't convert, but gave it up. First team foul against Georgia Tech. Robert Brickey goes to the stripe. Watch the pass here by Danny Ferris. Here we can see things, that ability. Now that bounces a fortuitous bounce for Duke, but a good cut by Henderson, and then the giveaway by McNeil. The season averages for Robert Brickey at 19 uh, last Sunday against Clemson, a 54% free throw shooter. There's what he's looking at. That ever used to bother you when you shot free throws? Well, when I was playing, they didn't sit in the end zone. They were all around half court. Ricky converts on one out of two from the line. 5-4, Duke. Now, Oliver with the ball. A two-guard they're making into a one. A point guard. He's got great ability. Hammond to Oliver. In continuity, up and down, screen across. See Furry, the zone. Snyder falls down, Furry leaves McNeil, and he hits two in a row. Johnny McNeil with four points. Tommy Hammonds is going to get a couple of offensive rebounds for goals. They're fronting him, and if Georgia Tech misses, he's going to finish a couple of sequences. Ferry free, won't fall. The rebound pulled down. Here's a two-on-two. Two. Scott wants some help. Pulls up, now puts it inside. Nice, nice dish to Whitmore, and the foul. I think they got Robert Bricky. We'll see. Or Quinn Snyder. Oh, pretty pass. If you force the ball up the floor, the defense can't react. You don't know your assignment. Sometimes there's a mistake. You don't see the cutter as well. The retreating defense, everybody paying attention to the ball. They got Bricky on it, but a great cut there. David Whitmore. First foul on Robert Bricky, the second team foul against Duke. Whitmore. Smith, 6'10", senior out of Fort Washington, Maryland. Number 33 checks in for Mike Krzyzewski. 
David Whitmore, 66% free throw shooter. He's way off. That was not attractive. Bobby getting this program going a few years ago. Good recruiting class coming in. What, five rookie of the years? What a rookie. Incredible. Because he learned from the best in the business, Frank McGuire. So the Yellow Jackets, 14-44 left to go in the first half. They lead by two. taste and you'll drink it dry yo this is Morris Blackman and this is my main man Michael Jordan and this is a pair of tights from Ed Jordan from Nike this is something you can buy and this is a patented vicious high prime 360 slam dunk this is something you cannot do let me repeat myself this you can buy you cannot do this can 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 uh huh uh -huh. Hammonds enjoys fishing so he can be alone. That doesn't happen in the ACC. Ala Abdelnabi fighting over the top. And in the back, Mike Krzyzewski said they're going to zone. Help out. You see Danny Furry. They cannot get it into him now. They kicked it to McNeil, who made a jumper. They're going to have to do more of that just to keep Danny Furry honest. See number 35 in your screen? He can't get out there quick enough. Well, if that can happen more often... Johnny McNeil's going to put a smile on Crimmins' face. Yellow Jackets have outscored Duke 6-1 in the last 2 minutes 21 seconds. They've hit their last three shots. Duke has missed their last three shots. Little 2-2-1 pressure now. And Christian Leitner, the 6'10 freshman, in for Mike Krzyzewski. Snyder takes it, dishes off. That's three. Pretty good sixth man, isn't he? Johnny Smith hits for three. In all the tapes I've watched, he really plays within himself. Now he's playing Scott. He'll make him put it on the floor. Snyder almost strips the ball from Oliver, and Krzyzewski wanted the foul. Hammond throws up a bad shot, and the rebound stripped down by Leitner. Smith. Oh, nice pass. Pretty good reaction defensively. Henderson was flying in a great defensive play. Johnny, McNeil. Yeah, Johnny McNeil got over. I don't know if it was as bad a shot as it was the type of shot. He didn't really stroke it on the other end. Smith whips it to Henderson. Uh, you can't gamble. You saw David Whitmore go by. Phil Henderson should have made him pay for that a little bit. We had some wars when he was at Army. He used to go up and play his club, Mike Krzyzewski. Right then, I knew he was destined for greatness as a coach. Anthony Sherrod, the 6'7 senior, checks in out of Jenkins County High School. Henderson, cross court to Smith. They're very happy with Leitner's improvement. They feel he's going to be a terrific player. Big guy inside. Hammonds on Ferry. Leitner has it. McNeil backs him away. Shot clock down to 15. Great cut by Ferry. Ferry there, double team draws the foul. There's that pump. He does it so well. I mean, you can prepare kids by talking about it, but until you get into a game situation and sort of react, right here, the little pump. Walt Fraser used to do it beautifully. Pump draws or sucks the defense in, and now the ability to get it up, occasionally make it, and step to the line. Danny Ferry, a 73.5% free throw shooter. Neither team really into the rhythm yet. No, I, I think the noise factor, the importance of the game. I mentioned to Danny, wouldn't it be something if he got the chance to play for his dad's club, the Bullets? He's going to be a lottery pick. Duke by two. Scott. They're not going to let him take the jumper. He's going to have to beat him with the dribble. Smith all over Scott, who penetrates, puts up a bad shot. Smith pulls down the rebound. Hurt himself, too. Cross court, Ferry. Wanted the three, pulls up. It's 
gets it back. Snyder looks back to Ferry. This three-point range inside. Georgia Tech fans thought there was a walk. Snyder around McNeil for three. Henderson throws up an air ball. Very unselfish play. Oliver. Hammonds, triple team. Nowhere to go. Where's Oliver? A quick beat. Good patience here, too, by Georgia Tech. Well, he's a player controlling the club. He's gotten the ball to good spots. They just haven't been able to convert. There's the down and through. Either side, Sherrod or Scott. Shot clock to 18 for three. Yes. Oliver. Now, Duke has been running the offense beautifully, but not completing sequences. One point lead for the Yellow Jackets. Smith has it taken away. Plays like that. Wholesale substitutions for Duke now. Gary Kubek, the 6'6 sophomore, checks in, number 22. Now, last year against Temple, I was very impressed with Kubek. Apparently, he's lost a little confidence in his shot, but he's got a great stroke. But defensively, great Kubek can guard. Henderson sits down. Robert Ricky comes back in. Ferry sits down. Abdul Nabi back in. Tech by one. 12 10 left in the first half. Great penetration. Oliver. He hits from three points, comes right back with a layup. Duke was punished for good post defense. They got caught on the high side. Oliver averaging just over 16 points a game. The pushing foul on Hammonds. That's two in a row. The first one I could understand. That one, he relaxed a little, got caught behind. Hammonds in a little bit of foul trouble, barely halfway through the first half. The Mercedes-Benz 560 SL Coupe Roadster. Is it the car you wanted above all others because of its mighty V8 power? Or its blend of quick reflexes and sumptuous comfort? Or its incredible workmanship and finish? Only one thing is certain. You will have the driving experience of your life finding out. There were a few proud men, men of adventure, men of courage, men who knew the meaning of honor. There still are the Marines. We're looking for a few good men. Recently, Diet Coke has been presenting some hard-to-understand statistics. Diet Pepsi now brings you the facts. Last year, two million families stopped buying Diet Coke. And over a million new families started buying Diet Pepsi. So what's giving Diet Coke such a distorted view? Gentlemen, I trust we're all seeing this the same way. The real move is to Diet Pepsi. More good ones for you on Saturday, starting at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. First, the Owls of Temple in Rhode Island, then Louisville, ranked number 7, the Cardinals against Memphis State, and the late-night game, New Mexico against Utah. Memphis State with a great win over Florida State. Matt Kennedy like that one back. Of course, they're having a great year. Who would have figured at the shoot-around today, 11.55 gone in the first half, Tom Hammonds with no points for the Yellow Jackets, and they're ahead by three. Not too many people, including Bobby Crimmins, we mentioned Quinn Snyder. He's just going to relax a little bit, play his game. I guess Larry Limbo may have got a contact problem. A very sympathetic audience, too. Dick Caparo alongside. 11.49 left to go. Georgia Tech leads by three. I would like to take that conversation between Froggy. Come on, we got to play. We got a plate. <laughs> we got a plane to catch. A little up and down. Hammonds outside's been scoreless. He averages over 21 points a game. Look at the nice denial. Pass. Sherrod underneath. No foul? Yes, there was a foul. Mo Britton that time. Earlier they had missed an easy one underneath. 
Johnny McNeil three. They couldn't complete the sequence. But the denial, they're pressuring the ball. Take away the next logical pass. You got to shake your man. Anthony Sharab with a great move to the goal. Kubek on the high side. Good interior passing. But you got to finish this one off, Mo. Britain, unsuccessful. And the big junior, 6'9", out of Sylvan High School here in Atlanta, goes to the stripe. 68% free throw shooter. Maurice Britton. Dennis Scott out near half court, really struggling with his ankle. He's going to have to reach back a little. He's in some agony, trying to shake it off. And he's going to need his agility because he's not going to get the open jumper against Duke. Not too often. Five-point lead for Georgia Tech. Biggest of the night. Little 2-3 zone, Jim. Yellow, First time. Yellow Jackets back quickly on defense. Now this puts a little more pressure on the outside shooting. Barry whips it to Kubek for three. Nice. Henderson with a big board takes the dribble and the foul underneath. Anthony Sherrod with the giveaway underneath. Some active players on the glass on both clubs. Four team fouls against Georgia Tech. It's great to watch players when they're struggling and when their flow is going. I think Kubek has a classic style release. It's all in the head. You gotta have a positive approach. A junior out of University Park, Illinois, a 74% free throw shooter, his first points of the night. Henderson with one, Ricky with three, Abdul Nabi with two, Smith with three, and Danny Ferry one for two from the line, no points from the field. So the two big guns, Bill, have been scoreless. Silence. They'll ring the bell. Back to a three-point lead for Georgia Tech. 11-10 to go. Ala Abelnabi has done a great job on Hammonds. Chris has got that weak side help. Sherratt had the shot. Who back over quickly? Look at Furry back there. I mean, it's almost impossible. They're going to have to take the jumper, and he's going to have to seal Abelnabi in low. Oliver passes around Ferry, and Abelnabi comes up with a loose ball. Duke can tie with a three-pointer. Henderson around Hammond. Hammonds rejects it. Henderson to the point. Oh. Rejected by Britton. Three on one. Scott on the flank. Against Snyder. Pulls up. Britton pulls it on the... Two in a row won't fall. Good run. Good pursuit of the basketball that time. Dennis Scott has to forget about the foot. He's still wincing. I'll tell you, if he made that, he would have forgotten about the ankle. Bobby Kremen says, get the hands up. David Whitmore, the freshman, sent to check back in. Ferry to Kubek, left flank. Pretty good reaction defensively by Tech. Kubek for three. Here's a four on one. Oliver dishes. Hammonds with his first two and the foul. Kubek draws the foul, a chance for a three-pointer. Second foul on Kubek. They are running the lanes beautifully. We mentioned some empty trips. Mike Krzyzewski's problem, the long jumper has started fast breaks. Here, you can, they gave it up early enough so the charge couldn't be drawn, but that's just great running, and of course the strength to get up and finish this off. Bang! He is a good one. Nice replays by our Colgate oh. graduate director. Halfway through the first half, and the three-point conversion by... Bobby Ammon, Tommy Ammon. A lot of pro scouts here and a lot of major league plays being made. Six point spread, the biggest lead. 9.52, Henderson right side to Brickley. And back to Henderson, underneath, stolen away again. Oliver dishes, Whitmore, play and by Barry. Oh, what a marvelous defensive play. Didn't stop running. Ricky. Go get it! Looks like second and ten in the Bengals' 40-yard line. Well, that's why ACC clubs are so tough to beat when they play out of their regular schedule. The, the competition, the battling that goes in night in and night out, and this crowd, a great factor in tech when they were struggling early, keeping them hanging in. for Danny, I guess, huh? Over 9,000 
are jammed in here. Some of them camped out on Tuesday night just trying to get tickets. The block, or the line was four blocks long at lunchtime today. Diagonal screen. And the raspberry chant for Danny Ferry. Duke has missed their last five shots. There's That's a brick not... thrown up by David Whitmore. Not good judgment there. Still in the 2-3. Going to force Duke to make the outside jump shot. Bill Duke's not at a field goal in four and a half minutes. Danny Ferry to Abdul Nabi against Britain. Draws the foul. No call. Pretty good offensive move. Duke is really concentrating on this guy. Oh. Hammond starting to get on track. Tommy, the 6'9 senior. And that concentration has helped the others, believe it or not. Up to an eight-point lead for Georgia Tech. Duke ranked number one after winning 13 games in a row. Then upset by North Carolina, by Wake Forest, and by North Carolina oh. State. They beat Clemson, but Clemson was missing a lot of their starters. And Oliver called for the foul. Danny Ferry right on the money with the jumper, but a tremendous rebound. Oh. First foul on Oliver, 15 foul against Georgia Tech. Whitmore called over to the sideline by Bobby Cremens and said, what in the world was that last shot you took at the other end? Abdul Nabi gets a rest. I can't get over Phil Henderson. But he gets up in the middle of it, that slight body, quickness to the ball, the shot soft enough where it lingers around. And right here, look at that great effort and the slap by Brian Oliver. Anderson, two out of three from the line so far tonight. Now, Mike Krzyzewski plays a lot of people, and they're subbing. I think he's just trying to get a little composure as well. Just let them relax, get a flow and a feel of the game. Leitner checks back in along with John Smith. Ferry with a big board. Fade away. Danny Ferry still has no field goal. There's the big one. Huh? Kubek. Or Leitner. Leitner, yeah. Carved out a little area. They're very happy with him. Blue Devils close to within six at the eight-minute mark. Oh. oh, off the glass, Brian Oliver, the big junior. Oh, they've been raving about him. They cleared out the side. The kiss shot on the money. Seven points. Leitner, nice dish. Fade away. Danny Ferry's first field goal comes at 7.48 of the first half. They're He's not got back. three. They're not back. They can't work. Whitmore. Duke is not getting back defensively, and it's killing them. Whatever Bobby Crumman said to Whitmore, he paid heed. He's got five <laughs> from three-point range. Yes. Uh, does that help the Duke cause? When Snyder connects, he's a 32% three-point shooter. They have to slow Tech down in their defensive half of the floor now. They've got to deny, make them reverse the ball a lot. Not the, look at this, the quick jumper. Scott off the mark for three. Snyder has it stripped away, and Oliver gets it back. Seven minutes left in the first half. Five-point lead for Georgia Tech. Off the mark. A little quick. For me, anyhow. You got some heavy hitters inside. Brian's got to run the show, not look for himself. Henderson with springs in his leg. He hits two. Right back. Phil with four. Two from the field, two from the strike. Duke closes back to it in three. Nice run here by the Blue Devils. Well, the one constant they always have is the man-to-man -man pressure dig. Every trip, you've got to work to get free. You've got to take good shots and you get yourself in a hole. Britton backs in on Ferry, won't fall. Danny slaps it away. Look at Henderson fight for the loose ball. Touch last by Britton. We've got a timeout, 623 left to go. Georgia Tech leads by three. Trying to tighten that tummy, struggling with ordinary sit-ups? Now, work smarter with the Abdominizer, the intelligent alternative to sit-ups. Look, the Abdominizer targets the proper abdominal muscles, so each and every sit-up is made more effective. Safer, too. You can have a tonier tummy in weeks. Best of all, it's so simple. The unique rocker mechanism lets you rock. Rock. Rock your way to a firmer stomach. Look, ordinary sit-ups can torture your tailbone. It's not worth the pain. I designed the abdominizer to produce an automatic pelvic tilt, which better isolates the abdominal muscles and makes exercise safer for your lower back. 
The Curl works upper abdominals. Raise your knees and tighten lower abdominals, too. The Abdominizer, just $19.95. The intelligent alternative to sit-ups. Get smart. Call toll-free now. To order your Abdominizer, call 1-800-242-7400. Use your credit card to avoid COD charges or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $3 shipping and handling to Abdominizer, Department 345, Canton, Ohio, 44750 or call 1-800-242-7400. This report details new opportunities in several markets here. And we'll be arriving in... 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Yeah, at uh, 200 kilometers, uh, 125 miles per hour for you. I never would have known. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Too bad. If Duke is going to do some damage this year, it's this guy, the point guard, Quinn Snyder. He's got to ring the bell and take the shot. Brian Oliver pays attention on the wing to John Smith. And Quinn, with confidence from three, shooting 49% overall. If he lights it up, it's going to help the inside people. But the problem for Duke has been the field goal percentage. Not on their game. 55% for the year. It's a little come down. Speaking of Quinn Snyder, Mike was telling us at the shoot-around today that last year he took his role as the floor leader, the floor general a little bit too ser too much seriously. Uh, Overzealous. And, and, and he likes him to take some shots now, gets him into the floor because then it helps him do the other things so much better. Henderson banks it off the glass, won't fall. Oliver pulls it down. Got the numbers. Tech. Three on two, and Oliver stuffs it on by. Duke normally gets back and balances the floor. That's their one area of problems. But Tech, the man-to-man -man switch after the timeout, got what they wanted. This could be on Furry? No. I think they've got Johnny McNeil, who uh, was trying to tackle Danny Ferry in the paint. You know what? I don't believe that. I thought he did a good job, and the offensive player moved him out further. Now, he did have body contact, but generally, you don't want to punish good post-defense. Second foul on McNeil, the sixth foul against Georgia Tech. Five-point lead for the Yellow Jackets. Snyder inside. Henderson, triple team. Snyder way outside will set it up. Carl Brown playing Snyder is the guy that could really give Tech a lift. Danny Ferry with one field goal. Five and a half to go in the first half. Second one won't fall. Leitner, oh, the freshman, misses the easy one. Too easy. Now, Danny Ferry's getting the ball easily, which is a good sign for Duke. From three-point range, boy, that was almost a four-pointer. Dennis Scott, Bobby Cremens did not like that. Well, I don't think he's going to be able to go to the goal at all because of that ankle. Now, Furry continues to get it down on the box. It's a great sign for Duke. Nice pass. A little bit awry, but the look was there. This crowd giving the uh, Blue Devils right there, Coach K, a lot of trouble. 9,000 are here. They're noisy, and they're close. Well, John Smith was on the foul line, and Danny Furry passed it there as he made the cut to the goal. But he always looks. Arizona State and Florida State, the season premiere, college baseball, 8 o'clock Sunday, Bob Carpenter, and my friend from the Minnesota Twins, Jim Cott. Uh, no Jim, as well when he's with the Yankees. Yes. Dennis Scott. You can't leave him alone. That was a mistake in judgment by Robert Bricky. First two on the night for Dennis Scott. The sophomore averaging just under 20 points a game. Perry, double team, now triple team, and the offensive foul on Bricky. Brian Oliver. And look at Perry. Oh, let's hope he's not hurt. Hurt. I don't, I don't think it was the back. I think he got a shot in the stomach. Now watch Brian Oliver cause all of this. He comes in from the top and deflects the ball. And right there, you just see how he fell. Took a on little the elbow, elbow, huh? I'm delighted it's not the back. Watch the left elbow, I think, come around and hit Ferry. And watch Oliver, too. Watch him come down, Jim. Gets a piece of the ball, starts the whole thing. There's the elbow. You're right. They took him out to save the timeout. Seven-point lead, four and a half left in the first half. McNeil, Smith all over it. Yeah. Nice pass, and Hammond. He's the, got seven. After Nobby relaxed, Hammond's had him all the way. Biggest.
biggest lead of the game. They're going nuts in Peachtree Land. Danny Perry, Duke's big gun, on the bench. Abdul Nabi answers with a field goal. He's got four. Post defense for Tech, very questionable right now. They're not fighting. Oliver penetrates. Nice look. Blocking foul called on Smith. Well, they love to step up on you, but Tech well drilled right now when they see the man present himself, get rid of the ball, and slide the charge. It's very hard to stop, but watch the slide now to avoid the contact. Of course, Smith then extending to his left. First foul, 16 foul. Oliver. Oh, Scott. Oh, Scott from four. Dennis Scott starts to get on track. He's hit his last two. While his mother and some relatives came down for the ball game, I knew he wouldn't pack the tackle because of the ankle. All the way from Virginia. Three-pointer won't fall from Snyder. All the way from Reston, Virginia. They drove all night, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Scott said. Brown pulls up. This is two-point range. And Carl Brown. I don't know about that shot, though. I think his job is to go in and run it. It gives Georgia Tech, though, an 11-point lead, and they're on their feet. This is where Quinn Snyder has to take over, get the ball, and get them into something. Shot clock down to 10. Snyder starts to penetrate, takes it in the paint, and the foul on Carl Brown, his first. That's what you need more of, that leadership. He knew the time shot. He had to make the penetrating move. Bobby upset, but good senior leadership there. Danny Ferry checks back in after that injury. And how about the trainer for the Duke Blue Devils, Max Crowder? This is his 800th consecutive Blue Devil basketball game. He took over training the Duke Blue Devils way back when, 1962, when he was a senior. There he is, Max Crowder. Thinking of all the guys he had to listen to, right? Vic Fulvis, Bucky Waters, Juby Brown, Chuck Daly. I mean, they had some pretty shable. I think I said to him today, that's an easy job, though. All the games they won, it must have been pleasant to sit by. Max has been with the Blue Devils through seven ACC titles. He's made six trips to the Final Four. Now, Anthony Sherrod, the 6'7 senior, checks back in out of Jenkins County High School in Millen, Georgia. Snyder reloads at the line, a 68% free throw shooter. He's got four on the night. A 10-point lead, excuse me, built for Georgia Tech. Well, we can't leave Bill Foster out either. Of course, we did such a great job. Final Four team. Quinn Snyder, two for two from the line. 2.52 left to go. 33-23 our score as we take time out. Enjoy extra. Shadala Albon will be doing a great job denying in the post area. It should set up a follow-up by Tom Hammonds. This particular play, he resets and loses Abdul Nabi. Great offensive maneuver, but you'll see some tip-ins on jumpers because of that running post defense. And the guy that really lights it up for this club, as the, they pop out, they down-screen for him, and this one got him going. That is Scott with a great stroke on a gimpy leg. Bill, at the top, we talked about Duke coming in, hitting at a 53% clip, holding the opponents to 41%. Georgia Tech, they've hit their last four shots. They're shooting at a 54% clip. Duke, 33% from the field. Think any of that is a motion in this house? Little opening to the floor now. Trying to run some clock down. Carl Brown with a basketball. Whips it down low to McNeil. Gets it back to Scott. He's doing this because he's got Hammonds out with the... The two fouls, he's trying to run some clock and then try and end up with a good sequence at the end of it. Also because he's got a nine-point lead. Ferry bats it right back. Shot clock inside of nine. Scott, nice move around. Oh. Smith puts it up. Won't fall. Ferry gets the board. Major League rebound in traffic. Empty trip. Two of five to go. Well, they got some time on off, so that's one good part for Tech. Smith outside. Two-pointer. That 
diagonal pass again. Danny Ferry, so many weapons. In the regular stack offense now. They got a five second call again. This time on Carl Brown. You gotta pop out, you gotta run everything perfectly against Duke's defense. A little frustration by Bobby. Who was a three-year starter at guard for the Gamecocks. Then he played pro ball in Ecuador for a while. Competitive as a player, just like he is as a coach. Henderson. And the foul. From the back, I guess, McNeil. That's the eighth foul. This is something Duke does very well. The vision of Danny Furry posts up, and of course then the cut, he gives the ball up. This one, they don't finish with the kiss shot, but that's the punishing type of offense they have. You can't relax and face the ball, go back cut, and of course he's such a good deliverer of the ball. McNeil sits down with four points. Maurice Britton, the big 6'9 junior, checks in. Henderson goes back to the strike. Phil is two out of four so far tonight. Two out of five. He's got four points. I'll be curious to see if Duke puts a little more pressure on the backcourt right now. Big board there. Henderson against Britton. Springs oh. in his legs. Oh. Kisses it softly off the glass for his sixth point. Phil Henderson can play in and out. Equally as well. 115 to go. Georgia Tech leads by five. Didn't need that. No. Nope. Over the back, Abdomabi. Now Oliver is telling Anthony Sherrod, and rightfully so, you know, run some clock before you take that shot. You have to have a pace and a feel for the flow of the game. That time, Anthony Sherrod didn't, but fortunately, Dennis Scott on the inside able to hold off a la Abelnami. <laughs> and, and he's from Bloomfield, near me in Jersey. Dennis Scott, an 83% free throw shooter. One for one tonight. He's got five points out of Reston, Virginia. His mom is here again. She drove all night long. Full of relevance. Ferry with a board at 110 mark. Six point lead for Georgia Tech. They've led by as many as 11. Uh, Duke has to be happy. A little pick and roll high. They're right back at it. Little steps. Refs will not let you cross over. You might as well throw the move out. that you have to call. Billy, as you look at the Duke huddle right there, Danny Ferry's only field goal came at 7.48 of the first half. He's got three points. Don't you think he's contributing, though? Oh, there's three a question he's contributing, but and the pass. we're talking about somebody that averages 22 points a game. Conversely, Tommy Hammond's got off to a slow start. He's only got seven points, and he averages 21-plus for Georgia Tech. At the line, Carl Brown, a 65 or 61% free throw shooter, born in England, went to South Dade High School. Duke had the ball. It was 34-28. They got a crossover move for a walk. So instead of a possible 34-30, it now could be 36-28. Just little things that can add up. And the 6-2 junior, two for two from the line. He's got four points, and Georgia Tech back to a six-point spread. This is why Henderson's so valuable. He takes a lot of pressure off of Quinn Snyder. He can run the show as well as play in. Smith looks for Abdul Nabi, but he's teamed down low. Ferry spins it out. Henderson gets it back. Oh. Ferry open. Sherrod, no foul. Ferry Great. for four. Great look. Open the floor. 15 seconds left to go. Last trip for Tech. Look at that hustle. Down to five. That'll do it. Georgia Tech at home.
home before 90,000 against the 12th ranked Blue Devils of Duke. Duke came in, and of course they were third in the ACC, but right now they're behind by six after trailing by 11. We'll go back to the studio and our birthday boy friend, John Saunders. Thank you very much. Thanks for the reminder just how old I am every time out. 36 to 30 is the score. As we welcome you back, there's our score. Perhaps another big upset brewing. Georgia Tech leads the Blue Devils, ranked number 12, by 6. Hi again, everybody. I'm Jim Kelly. My partner, Bill Raftery, is back. We talked about it at the top. Mike Krzyzewski surprisingly saying the W's and the L's really don't matter. It's a preseason, but he's very upset. Duke out of their rhythm a little bit, especially Danny Perry. Well, on the offensive end, he's not involved in the shooting end. He has passed the ball well. The switching to the zone took them out of their game a little bit. But the thing that has, has really struck me is their inability to get back and by that they're not really denying and as aggressive because they're not in position as they normally are on their end of the floor so the pressure offense by Tech has been very helpful for Bobby Kremitz. Barry by the way didn't even get his first field goal until there were just 748 left in the first half. Now the big gun for Georgia Tech Tommy Hammonds he's got seven points there the big disparity in the field goal percentage Duke came in Bill hitting at a 53 percent clip while holding their opponents to what they're shooting tonight, 41. And again, I thought they got some good shots but didn't convert. I really believe the building sh really rocking has impacted on them. They have to relax. The kind of shots that you would like as a coach, not making them, not nailing them down. I think they're very fortunate. In a sense, it could be worse. They've hung tough, but right here, their problem has been getting back, recognizing people. You just see they able to penetrate deeper than a nor you normally do against Duke, they have to stop that. I think they have to balance the floor, and of course that takes a lot of hustle, and you have to take good shots so everybody's ready. You've been in a situation like this when you're on the verge of upsetting a high-ranked team. What's Bobby Kremens telling the team at Haber? You're halfway there now. I'm sure he didn't want to go in at the half just to keep playing. I think he has to make them mentally attuned to be aggressive, push the ball up the floor, be patient on the offensive end. Don't take that quick shot, and I think he's going to have to yo-yo the defense to play a lot of man then get them back into the zone see if Duke can miss a few of the long ones right, the flip side then what is coach K telling his Blue Devils right now? hey fellas we didn't play a good half we're knocking at the door let's get back and balance the floor let's take the type of shots that we're used to taking as they did the first half only this time we're gonna make them it's loud there's 9,000 here a sellout crowd getting ready for the second half it's coming up Georgia Tech leading the Blue Devils by six when we come back most cars are designed specifically to handle this, the sales curve. The BMW 325 IS is influenced by curves of a slightly different nature. Before you choose a car engineered for the whims of the marketplace, consider one designed for undulations of a far more relevant variety. How do you figure your financial future? How do you get an advantage? Look for an edge. Look for a company that can sharpen your opportunities in mutual funds, pensions, IRAs, employee benefit plans, insurance, and much more. Look for the principal edge from the principal financial group. One of America's largest, helping people with the fine points of their financial future, the principal. Look for the edge. Showtime is blowing away the competition. Showtime's box office blowout includes hits like Good Morning Vietnam, Throw Mama from the Train, You Won't See Those on HBO, Showtime exclusives, Here You See Them, There You Don't. Otis, contemptible. I'm speaking of offending in the personal grooming arena. We're seeking maximum protection and a fresh scent once you grab Right Guy's Four Stick from Gillette. Antipressment and deodorant. Anything less would be uncivilized. NCAA basketball, Duke versus Georgia Tech, is brought to you by Allstate. For home, auto, and life insurance, you're in good hands with Allstate. By Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate Service, the better way to sell your home. And by Mercury, the shape you want to be in.
Jim Kelly and Bill Raftery back with you. And there's your score. The Yellow Jackets over the Blue Devils by six. It was an 11-point lead for Georgia Tech with 3.25 to go. Duke made an 8-3 spurt at the end to close to within six at halftime. Well, at the top, Bill, we talked about the All-American matchup. Danny Ferry, of course, for Duke and Tommy Hammonds. And look what they've done so far in the first half. And Danny Ferry, two for seven. I only remember that long three-pointer. I thought he took some good shots, didn't make them. But, again... Uh, I thought the move by Bobby Kermit saving Tom Hammonds with the two fouls gets him to play in a freer fashion. And, of course, I think Danny Furry came up with some big rebounds. And even though he didn't have the big numbers, did a good job for Duke. There is Danny Ferry, by the way. And just to follow up on that graphic, he's had 16 straight points in 16, point, 16 straight games in double figures this year. And the Blue Devils, when he has scored 20 points or more, 22 and 6, 7 and 1 this year. The only loss being in the Wake Forest game. Snyder in the backcourt. 1954 left to go. And I'm looking for Dennis Scott. I don't see him on the bench or on the... Uh Carl Brown. Danny Perry gets on track to start the second half. He's got seven. On cue, huh? You mentioned Scott. He's made a three-pointer. Here he comes. He just came down the ramp. And he's limping slightly. Tough shot. Hammonds oh. pulls up and answers Perry's field goal. Well, that eliminates the pressure of the double up down low. Hammonds with nine points. Abdulnabi stripped away. McNeil bats it off Abdulnabi's knee and goes over to Georgia Tech. Now Danny Furry can get number three on Tommy Hammonds if he just gets a little closer to the hole and uses that pump fake. Hammonds going right off his feet. Hammonds spins with Furry. Oh, what a pretty oh. shot. Hammonds with 11. He is a smooth performer. Doesn't waste the dribble. Knows exactly what shot to deliver. And right here, lacking concentration. Mike Krzyzewski wants the timeout. Not a good start for Duke. John Smith will come in. And very quickly, the Blue Devils have fallen behind by eight. If you've got yourself a car and you've got yourself a house, you could be on your way to some very nice savings. Because with Allstate Homeowners Insurance and an excellent driving record, you could save up to 15% on your auto insurance. And 15% could mean big money for all the important little things. What a day. What a day. The Allstate Auto Advantage. Another reason. A member of the Sears Financial Network. It started a car deserted on a frozen lake for four months, and 40 cars after two and a half hours with their lights left on. Today's Die Hard, with power to start your car, and a whole lot more. Do you know why Spuds McKenzie has so much fun at parties? Because he's always in control. Spuds knows it's cool to live by one simple rule. Know when to say when. A reminder from Anheuser-Busch. You all know about the great tradition, of course, football-wise. John Heisman, former Georgia Tech head football coach. But you might not know that that same man that the trophy is named after was also the basketball coach here at Georgia Tech. Didn't have such success on the hardwood. I can relate to him. Obviously, football much easier to coach. Speaking of football here at Georgia Tech, we bumped into the football coach of the Ramblin' Wreck, Bobby Ross, who's out jogging today. Mm -hmm. Best wishes to all of Bobby's family. His uh, granddaughter, just six weeks old, had a very critical operation out in California, a heart transplant, and she's in critical condition in a California hospital, but everybody's expecting the best. It sounds very promising. You saw that pass to Scott, too. Not a good one. Dennis not as mobile. Bobby smiling. But the one thing the coach said about Bobby Crimmins is I got to go out and recruit and get good players like Bobby Crimmins does. Tough shot. Won't fall. Slapped away. Ricky gets his own board, takes the dribble, and buries it. They've got to make things happen. That was a play that was up for grabs. That showed that Duke is involved a little bit. They have to assert themselves somewhat, put their personality into the game. Ricky with five at the 18-minute mark. McNeil, high low, not a good pass, too much traffic. That's like a quarterback with a bad read. Terrible, Snyder was there, Abdul Nabi was there, and Ferry was there. Henderson, confident. Nice and easy. 
No over speed there, just patient. Eight points for the 6'4 junior out of University Park, Illinois, and Bobby Kremens wants the timeout. 17.43 left to go. Duke down by four. Sable is a Mercury, so naturally it's comfortable. Comfortable even in the corners. Comfort and control, together in one car. Isn't it time you looked into a Mercury, where comfort and control are one? dribble Jim and I think Robert Bricky had a layup here as he spins but the beautiful play here is Danny Furry you mentioned he wasn't scoring maybe he wasn't contributing but just look at this the back slap to keep the ball alive and Robert Bricky now finishing off this is the type of game that Duke has to create show their inner strength their personality and make it a more competitive situation until they start making those little open shots or Danny Furry starts taking over. And Robert Bricky took a little page from the Danny Furry textbook right there with a little pump fake. Uh -huh. Oliver takes it down low. Tech leads by four. Scott tries to take it in against Bricky. Oh. Forces it over Ferry, who was there. McNeil slapped away. Snyder down inside along with Henderson. And Henderson called for the foul. Not a very good shot there. That is Scott. You know, if he takes this game seriously, Dennis, and loses a few pounds... I don't know about the training table here. Right here, he can bounce the ball. Looking at some games, the Louisville game, he showed he could do it, but there's a force, not a good basketball play. Tech, very fortunate to come up with that. Johnny McNeil at the line did not go to the strike in the first half. 32 of 46, he's converted a 69% free throw shooter. He had two field goals for four points. The junior out of Andrews High School in High Point, North Carolina. He stalks the sideline. I thought his answer today to you when you asked, what's the biggest, who was the biggest influence in your life? And right away, Frank McGuire. He said that uh, Coach McGuire had a different style. He was more of a player's coach. And the biggest thing that uh, Bobby Kremens learned from Coach McGuire was recruiting. How about what he said about McGuire going after all those New York City kids? A man with a mission. He had a little <laughs> network set up. He made up his mind that he had to have a couple. He'd go after him. Nobody else could get in. Frank, the greatest, when it came to... And, of course, Bobby bringing some kids down here from New York City next year. Oh, what a recruiting job yeah. he's done. Smith, fade away. Oh. Well, he is a tremendous asset to Duke. Seven points for Johnny Smith. Uh, he's going to match up with Tommy Hammonds. Back to a four-point lead. Brown on the right side. Snyder picks him up. McNeil very quickly out on him. Slapped away by Henderson. Now, McNeil made the one jumper, so Danny Furry, who's zoning when Hammonds is the logical receiver, is coming out a little. McNeil should be able to dump it down to Tom Hammonds. We told you 9,000 a sellout, 9,206. It's a new record here in the Coliseum. See, Papara now, he wants a little TV time. He's rubbing that ball. He knows the camera's on him. Out of Syracuse, New York. What a piece of work. Nicknamed a froggy for obvious reasons. The guttural toes. Little down screen for Scott. A little stagger. Hammonds, nice pass to McNeil. Tries to backdoor it against Perry, and Danny draws the foul. Well, I'll tell you. Pretty what? physical down there. I thought the lean-in position established. Mike Krzyzewski wanted a walk. But Johnny McNeil giving some pretty good minutes. Let's see if Ferry holds his ground. Oh, up in the air, though. Makes it easier to call. McNeil now 
three out of three from the line. He's got seven points. Tech leads it again by five. 16.50 left to go. There is the Silver Fox. It'll be 41. We'll make it 42 on the 4th of July. Two years older than me. Chris McGee's going to get the ball with Curry zoning. If he could do some damage, boy, would open up things for Tech. If Bobby's the Silver Fox, you and I are the great ghosts. Oh, silvery patch. Shape up by Bricky. There's Henderson. Good defense by McNeil. Oliver, three on one. Dish is off. Hammonds, offensive foul. Oh three on Tommy. Oh, boy. Now, the problem there was how the center, the point position on the break was handled. I don't think Brian Oliver did a real good job here. Here's the look away, and you see Snyder. Well, I'll tell you, that's a tough one. That's a bang bang. Toughest call in basketball. Now, now you appreciate Bob Crimmins saving him for that one foul. He had two. McNeil reaching inside on Ferry. A gamble by Bobby Crimmins sort of paid off. Now the third foul on him as he could have had that before the half. Fourth foul on McNeil. Second foul against Tech this half. Two team fouls against Duke. And Maurice Britton, the big junior out of Atlanta, 6'9", 245. That's tight end material. Uh, he's a big guy. Well, they try to get a game out of one of them, a combination of the two playing. Snyder, quick feet to good. Smith. Good dish, good penetrating dribble by Quinn Snyder. Johnny Smith with nine. Blue Devils have closed to within three. They were down by 11 with 325 to go in the first half. I think you've got to reverse the ball to get it to Hammonds. Good Oliver. deflection by Henderson. Bill Henderson with a great job. That is gorgeous. You generally see that in a pressure full court defense. That time in the half court set, Bill Henderson contributed. We looked at the stat sheet, and Bill and I don't know of any other team playing college boss basketball that takes charges taken and keeps stats, and there's an award given at the end of the year. And a lot of bruises with that, too. The true blue award, and I'm sure they have a few of those blue marks. Three point. Smith, yes! Johnny Smith. And right back at it. Now puts a lot more pressure on the offensive end of the floor. He ties it up. 43-43. 15-28 to go. Now they should come back here. What do I know? Hammond's all alone here. They just got to reverse it once. They keep Danny Curry out of the help position. is all over Ferry. Danny now double team. Nice dish. Henderson flips. Offensive foul. Henderson threw an elbow. Uh, tough. That's another bang bang. Mike didn't seem to mind it. But you can see the personality change in the Duke team. Danny Ferry always looking over his shoulder. The free man. Bill Henderson just can't get in position to release it. But right now Duke asserting himself. Coach K said the shooter on the day. We've got to turn up the emotion. That's what he's looking for in the last great, month. Great penetration inside by Brian Oliver. He's got 11. And Dennis Scott took away the help. Gorgeous play on the offensive end by Dennis. Tech regains the lead by two. The crowd gets back into it. Ricky puts it on the floor. So does Scott. Oliver, won't fall, over the back is Britton. Yeah, good call, Jim. That should have been given right back to Tommy Hammonds by Brian Oliver. He gave it, he cut to the basket, returned the ball. First foul on Britton, the fourth against Georgia Tech. Little problem with the string on the yo-yo here. Got to keep that thing in front of you. And right here, Tech, very fortunate to come up with this one. But I just didn't like the play at the other end. Neither did Bobby Cribbins. What a job he's done. In 48 months, he took a Tech team that was 4-23 and 23 and winless in the ACC, won the ACC championship, and made it to the final eight in the ACC. That's what that man did when he took over here at Georgia Tech. He wasn't preparing a speech for tomorrow, by the way. He's just looking at some tendencies. Five NC 
NCAA tournament bids before he got here. Tech had just won prior to the Bronx native arriving, and there it is, Danny Ferry again. Nice little pop-out screen by Ferry, then the roll down, and Britton caught. Nine points. Remember, he's had 16 straight games in double figures. He had five at intermission, tied at 45. Good pass. Hammond. What a shape up in the three-second lane by Tommy Hammonds. But Dennis Scott, who dragged, good little move now. They have Scott popping out, and they have to pay attention to him. 13 for the senior out of Crestview High School. Tech back by two. Going to the money. Henderson in and out of the hole. Rebound, Oliver. Around Ferry, they'll reload. Dennis Scott. Good. Just two. 38 straight games from three-point range. He is hit. Uh, he's got a loose cannon. But now they're saying there was only a two-pointer. They did. Well, Britain's got to force him out. This way he gets some help with the dribble. Oh, look at the crashing penetration by Henderson. You've got to put a body on it. Ten points for Phil. The guards are looking to run. You've got to lean on your guy. It's on the zone right now. Bobby Crumman is going to lose 12 pounds tonight. He is really working in the corner. In and out of the hole by Scott. Tipped up. And Maurice Britton. In the zone. You don't have the same checkout responsibilities. Mo Britton in great position to finish. There's the time left in Georgia Tech on the verge of an upset. Perhaps they lead again by four. Here it comes, the slam and jam and rip roar and good time video. The NBA's dazzling dunks and basketball bloopers. And the only way to get all the fun is free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. See your heroes fly through the air with the greatest of ease and land just about anywhere they please. For 45 minutes of all the right stuff, they'll give it a whirl and give it a heave. And if you hang around long enough, you'll see things you won't believe. Call this number now and get every jump, jam, slip, slide, and slam. You can look high. High and low, but you won't find a more fantastic show. Call now, and you won't miss out on your free video or the 25th anniversary edition of the famous swimsuit issue. It's an entire issue devoted to 25 years of the best in swimwear. And you'll save almost 50% off the cover price. 25 issues payable in three monthly installments of only $9.89 each. And you can charge it. Call the number on your screen right now to get your free video, the swimsuit issue, and save on Sports Illustrated. It's time to play ball. Highly ranked Arizona State battles Florida State in the premiere of Sunday Night College Baseball at 8 Eastern Live on ESPN. I think 42 is, is ridiculous. I don't, most of those people don't even know what they voted for. About half of them don't know whether they voted yes or no, let alone what the hell they voted for to begin with. Don't forget Big Monday, the Orangemen of Jim Beheim against PJ and the Pirates of Seton Hall. That's at 7.30. That kicks it off. Then the Boilermakers of Purdue. And, of course, it's Ohio State. The Buckeyes ranked number 15, trying to come back after Clem Haskins and the Gophers beat him the other night. You see Santa Barbara against the Run and Rebels. Big Monday, straight ahead here on ESPN. And UNLV struggled with Santa Barbara last year. You're right, though. Bobby's got to join the union. While we're away, he went over to the PA microphone and grabbed it. Somebody was throwing ice down onto the court, and he pleaded with the crowd, said no more. Gary Williams beats Louisville, or his team did. Then he go up to Minnesota. That, Everybody better be ready. I'll tell you, that was a tough ticket. Tough to play at Williams. Oh. The pass going on. Oh, they should have just let this one go. The fourth foul on Tommy Hammonds. Really unnecessary. Look at Bobby. I mean, it's a what no, for? It's a no call here. If anything, uh, of course, he was out of bounds. I don't know. I didn't like that. I have a lot of supporters, too. Hammond sliding down. Uh, he is moving. That he angle, is, he was definitely moving with yeah, Henderson. Yeah, Fraggy's one of the best, so. Leitner, the freshman, checks in. Back to Snyder. 
steps Ala. That man will be 42 in just 11 days out of Weber High School in Chicago. The three-year letterman at Army, the team captain, the graduate assistant for Bobby Knight, the head coach at Army, and now the head coach at Duke since 1981. A special person on that campus who's learned everything. There is to know about the game. It keeps growing. By the way, you talk about student athletes. 100% of the kids that have played for Coach K have that diploma. That's impressive. And now the 2 3 is not much of a zone coach. Likes to man to man. Oliver. Carl Brown. Shot clock says 11. Nice defense there. Kristen Leitner out. Well, you got to see him coming. To miss him, he's 6'10, 225. Paul Brown with the nickel dimer away from the basket. Quinn Snyder turning on the afterburners. Carl Brown, second foul, Bill. They had cleared out that backside for him. Ferry with five points in the first, four in the second. But sometimes the job he does not measured in the stats. Great contributor, all facets of the game. It's going to be tough now. A lot of people have to pick up the slack without Hammonds for Tech. Very anticipated Henderson's cut. Look at Snyder. Is that a travel? Uh, he rolled over. Oh, Leitner Christian. with a blocking foul. He looked like Anthony Munoz in the Super Bowl, didn't he? Clearing a hole for Icky. Well, they're saying he moved his hands. It's right in front of us. I thought it was a good pick, but on the other side, they're saying the hands were raised out. Mike Krzyzewski saying the hands were down, protecting. David He's Whitmore. Upset. I don't blame him. Whitmore checks in. He had the same view as the official. And out of half court, as long as you give him a step here. Watch the hands. Oh, he's just protecting. Oh. Ooh. A tough call coming right after the walk or non-walk. The walk that wasn't called. 11-14 left to go. Tech by four. They've led by 11. There's the turnover situation. The Blue Devils. That's surprising. Well, they value the ball. Scott's going to have to take over or Oliver. Those are the two guys now without Hammonds. This shortens the game for them a little bit. Double teamed. Oliver dishes to Sherrod. Oliver, three-point range. Yes! Well, it's pretty simple. You've got to challenge Oliver and Scott. Duke not can paint that right here. Bill Henderson. Kubek went down and threw. Bill Henderson threw that his back. Scott just watched it go out of bounds. Scott, 38 straight games. He's hit from three-point range. As 22, Gary Kubek, the 6'6 sophomore, checks out. Scott now, 14 points. He is tied for second in the nation in three-point field goal percentage, 41.5%. He's one out of six, though, tonight. Look at Ferry and Sherrod down low. Now, Kubek didn't go out for that. It wasn't his mistake. He was coming out. Leitner and Britton doing battle. Sherrod and Ferry. Ferry helps out on Oliver. Sherrod. Back man to man, Jim. That's the regressive nature. They sit back in that zone. That's not the Duke personality. Nice pass inside. Scott over Ferry. 16 points for Dennis Scott. Oliver and Scott right now. The big... Speaking of big goals, the guys you need. Danny Ferry, 11 points. He's now scored in double figures in 51 consecutive games. Leitner's staying back in. That's not Britain's shot. Good post offense here by Scott on Bricky. Boy, he is really using that derriere. Fourth foul on Robert Bricky. And this run by Georgia Tech with Hammonds on the bench in foul trouble. Well, you've got to learn how to hold off if you want the basketball. You see Scott now curling to protect his interest. And right here, Robert Bricky, the reach. And that's the one thing you don't want your players to do. All right, if he catches the ball, back off. 
and Bricky can't believe it, but good post offensive play. Nine and a half to go. Georgia Tech leads 56 49. Sherrod gets the inbound, returns it quickly to Dennis Scott, who's starting to heat up from three point range again. Way off the mark. Bricky on the rebound forces it up to Snyder. Ferry's flying. They've got that alley oop, but they haven't used it but once. Ferry looks for Abdul Nabi cutting, picked off. Oliver the other way. Three on two. Oh, no. Bad play, Brian Oliver. That's not like you. All he had to do was leave it for the trailer. That's his third foul. Not good judgment. He's so pumped up, he wants to do everything right. Right here, he's got the outside lane filled. There's a trailer right in the middle. He only had to do his hand the ball, and they got a perfect break. Not good judgment by Brian. And watch the way that he leads with the elbow. Goes right into yep. Snyder. And good defensive maneuvering by Quinn Snyder. Barry. Double teamed. Abdul Nabi pulls it down. And over the back is Maurice Britton. Duke may be trying to rush back into it now. That shot by Danny Furry, not typical of him. I think they just have to run some stuff, turn the ball over, and then get anything they want down low. The emotion of Danny Ferry, and that's one of the differences in this Duke team. Coach K told us at the shoot-around today, this team's not as clever as other Blue Devil teams mm -hmm. he's had, but they're more emotional. Well, they're going to have to reach back this next nine minutes. Abdul Nabi. Perfect from the line tonight. A 70% free throw shooter. And the big 6'10 junior's got five points on the night. Well under his 10.8 average, however. Britton on the board. Less than nine to play. A six-point spread. Georgia Tech leads it. Now Dennis Scott doing a good job holding off. He got John Smith way out in the high side. Tech doing a better job of reversing the ball, too. Whitmore right around Ricky. Ricky with two fouls back-to-back. -back. Minor variety, but costly. That's five. Oh. Well, this is not a major league foul. Oh. That didn't even look like a foul. Uh, nickel Dimer. And Bricky with number five. What does that put Duke at a disadvantage? Not a typical Robert Bricky evening. Boy, that was a very marginal call. I mean, there was barely uniform contact on, on that one. In the schoolyard, you wouldn't be called, you wouldn't play the next game if you called that one. Wouldn't call that one in the Big Ten. <laughs> a lot of leagues. Well, again, it gets to the point, what do you call? A lot of banging going on. Very tough situation for Duke, though. Britton inside the paint, rolls it around. Maurice has got six. A clever move, too. He saw the defense staying down. He jumped out to the foul area. Tech back to an eight-point lead at the eight-minute mark, almost. Murray's got his guy. He's banging Sherrod. There's going to be a foul. Yep. A little overzealous. But Furry certainly attracting people, but he he is able to present a passing lane here. And this is just physical play. As a freshman, Danny Furry wouldn't have been that strong. Right now, he's a powerful young guy. Really has matured both physically and, of course, grown as a player. I think Furry got away with a push. Well, it's usually the second guy, but it had started long before that. Both whacking one another. How about when Danny Ferry was out with the injury? It came at a time for the season for the Blue Devils that they were just discovering the personality. Then Mike said, we couldn't practice who we were finally finding out who we were. Both he and Bricky. And of course, they're so finely tuned. And Dennis Scott was mad. He didn't get the ball. He was ready to throw it up. But Dukes are finely tuned that they need. Look at this. Inside and what a move by Oliver. Seldom do you see Duke interior defense not paying attention to business. Never saw the dribble. 13 on the night for the junior out of Wills High School. Ryan Oliver, Duke, hitting 50% from the line. Georgia Tech, 77% from the line. Danny Ferry, off the glass. Yes. Nice chess. Well, they got to get him the ball. He'll do something good. Something positive will come because of his passing ability as well. Big number 35 with 14 points on the night. Closes Duke to within seven. 
7.15 left to go. This is where he's tough. Good movement. Scott will not fall. Whitmore, Snyder reaches inside, draws the foul. Everything going Tech's way. It didn't go over the top of the glass, fell back in. But Danny Furry on Dennis Scott now. Scott is bringing him outside, and it's certainly an easy open jumper for him, but he's unable to nail it. Look how open nobody's nobody. picking up underneath. Now, this is what Mike was saying. The last 10 days, we've not had a swarming defense no, at all. They're not reacting. They weren't in sync, moving, adjusting to one another. But that thing on most nights would have gone over the top. A red-shirted freshman, David Whitmore, one out of two from the line in the first half. A total of five points for the 6'9 native of Los Angeles. Jumping up and down on the sideline. He's telling him how to swarm on the defensive end. Get in here. Fuck you. One out of two in the first half. One out of two in the second. Six points. Danny Ferry, a one-man wrecking crew right now. Well, Whitmore went down to help a little bit late. And Danny Furry rising to the occasion. Very offensive-minded this second half. Senior taking over. Great position to hold off. Get the ball in. Look at that fake spin out and then recapture. Now you'll see David Whitmore just a little bit late. And Britton with the body. Had a chance for a three-pointer for the 6'10 senior out of Bowie, Maryland. How good can he be in the NBA? Well, he just sees so many things he can win without ringing the bell three out of four from the line 17 points for danny and duke now down by five well georgia tech doing a great job with tommy hammonds on the pines scott nice and mo britton with a great screen duke really not adjusting not sliding through or switching to Snyder. Snyder back on the left side to Ferry. Backs in. Oh, he's oh, hit three in a row. And he's 19 doing it. points for Danny Ferry. He's doing it with the quick release before the traffic gets around him. Duke back to within five. 6.15 to go. Oh, Oliver off the glass. Oh, he's got 15. I'm impressed with Tech clearing out and then Duke not getting over. A three-pointer by Danny. <laughs> 22 for Danny Ferry after having five in the first half. Uh, is he showing some heart? And Bobby going with Hammonds. Nice. Oh, nice pass to Rod with a bad hand. Should have put it on the floor, though. Should have put it on the floor. Duke down by four. 5.35 to go. Danny Ferry with 22 points tonight. Remember the Blue Devils, 22 and 6 when he has 20 points or more. Nice tip to himself by Brian Oliver. And Britton chucked Danny Ferry out a little. Nice shovel pass. Sherrod pulls up. Oliver set it up. Rebound inside. Whitmore. Bad percentage shot. Abdul Nabi with a big board. It was off to the side. 5-10 to go. We've got a timeout here. Four-point lead for Georgia Tech. Duke, ranked number 12. They trail it by four. Introducing a completely different Mercury Cougar. Introducing Pulse Quickening Comfort. The all-new Cougar from Mercury. Where comfort and control are one. We know what your home is really worth. How much it means to you. When it comes time to buy or sell, no one knows more or cares more about the American home than better homes and gardens.
Danny Ferry, Bill, only at five points in the first half. He's really gotten on track here in the second stanza, and a one-man wrecking crew has kept the Blue Devils in it. Oliver, look at that, 18 points, 22 points for Georgia Tech off, off the turnovers. And Danny Ferry was exhausted going into that last timeout. Really needed a break. You can tell the difference in players, though. What's inside that shirt when the game gets tough? And Danny Furry just came alive. They're only four behind. He needs, he needs a little bit of a blow, though. He has really given them everything to hang this close. You don't think that Bob Furry is a proud papa, do you? Oh. The way that this young man has matured. And... Can't fault him at all. At the five-minute mark, Tech four points in front. Smith. You see if Phil Henderson takes over a little bit. Fires over Hammonds, who's back in. Tommy gets the rebound. They ought to get, they ought to get Hammonds right into the flow. Hammonds wants can. the ball. Smith on it. Good defense by Henderson. Takes it away. And he glides. Great look. Leitner and a chance to make it a three-point play. Now he's got a great feel for the game, Phil Henderson. Leitner down the floor, getting him up and down. Excellent read, head up off the dribble, Jim. You can see here now the patience. He knows he doesn't have it, but drew the defense. And a nice, simple finish. And maybe the influence even on that pass of Danny Ferry. Mm -hmm. Henderson didn't look at Leitner, knew where he was. A very big freshman, two points in the first half. And a chance to make it five on the night. Very unselfish team. Smith off his knee. They do that very well. Slide behind on the free throw. Carl Brown with four points all in the first half. Checks back in, the native of England. Brian Oliver is playing a great game, but will occasionally make a mistake as he did before. Now they've got Brown on the ball. Whitmore sat down by Bobby Clemens. Hammond down low, Smith all over him. 4.18 left to go. And I got the hold by John Smith. And Hammond's just called the official and said, come on out here and take a look at this. <laughs> I would say Mike didn't enjoy that. Mike says, what kind of foul is that? A very competitive guy. Not at all bothered by late games because of television, though. We talked to him about that this afternoon. He said it used to be a big deal when Army played Seton Hall. He said, now the college game becoming more like the pro game. It's we, a big recruiting tool, obviously, for the coaches. He said he doesn't mind the late start. In those days, we would have offered up the houses to be on TV. But sophistication has taken over. Then it all equals out in the end. Hammonds, two for two from the line. You know Danny Ferry's going to touch the ball at the other end. Defensively, McNeil is going to have to do a good job pushing him out, and Tech's going to have to double up, Jim. 15 points for the 6'9 senior out of Crestview, Florida. His average, 21. Of course, when you double up, you then have to zone the other people to make sure you don't give up that easy one. At the four-minute mark, a four-point deficit for the 12th-ranked Blue Devils of Duke. They had him, and Tommy Hammonds backed off because of the four fouls. The 20th turnover for the Duke Blue Devils. Now, will they work on the clock a little bit? Well, they haven't, so my guess is no. <laughs> Hammonds not at all. Fires over Smith. Batted up, and Ferry gets the board, and a foul on Carl Brown. And they walk with the clock stopping. Danny Ferry fumbled the ball out of bounds because he's just a little bit tired. You lose your concentration when, when, when you're just down a little bit. And as I mentioned earlier on the timeout, he was exhausted. And, and right here, you'll see pretty good inside position. The two guards bagging one another. And Brown thought he had a free one, but Danny Ferry quicker to the basketball. That man, the only current coach to have played in and coached in the ACC Conference Final, Bobby Kremen. Still a four-point lead for Tech. Big miss on the one-and-one. One. They're trying to run motion now. 
Duke only 9 of 19 to lay from the strike. Almost a five-second call again. Brown inside against Kubek. Too hard. McNeil. Nice help. Barry drew the foul. Ooh. The penetration by Carl Brown sort of set the Blue Devil defense at a disadvantage. Hey, that was a tough call. Right here, the dribble penetration, the reaction to help out the slide down by John Smith. He's anticipating the pass. It actually is a break. But I thought Dan Furry got a little ball right there. Where's yep. the reach over, maybe? Got a little wrist. Mm -hmm. McNeil, three out of four from the line tonight. 69% free throw shooter out of Andrews High School. That's a big one. for Johnny McNeil. Leitner. So anxious. You can see they're just off their game. The slightest bit. And that's a normal rebound and you're going the other way. Abdul Nabi checks back in. The freshman gets a rest. 3.24 to go. Tech by five. And they've got the ball. Open on the inbound. And they won't help out as much on Hammonds. Off the knee of Carl Brown. Tough place to be dribbling the ball now. Bobby wants David Whitmore. Let's watch the knee now. Uh, right here, I was wondering why would you bring the ball down there? No, that was off the hand of uh, Snyder. But, you know, it's, you could second-guess officials all night in such a competitive game, but my point is that, as a former coach, is why are you dribbling the ball down there? Henderson. And a chance to make it three. The foul on 44, Johnny McNeil. Again, the ability to keep coming after you. McNeil got there late. That's number five. What a swing on the call at the other end, though. Well, you're right. One thing about the good ball movement, the good cuts on the double up, I'll tell you, with this crowd, the step in while he's in the air, but just excellent maneuvering of the basketball, and, of course, Furry attracting the double team, able to set it up. Maurice Britton checks in. McNeil sat down. Look at Henderson. Six points in the first half. Two of six from the strike. Violation, but they counted. Tom Hammonds had been in early. At the three-minute mark, Georgia Tech leads 68 to 66. Timeout for Bobby Cremins in the Yellow Jackets. Topaz not only knows how to hold people, but also how to hold the road. It's a car that unites comfort and control. Picture yourself in a Mercury, where comfort and control are one. In Georgia Tech, they've had some close games before the final of the ACC back in 86. Craig Neal's driving layup gave Tech a 65-64 lead. But Duke, All-American, Mark Allery answered with a short jumper. Duke back in front by one. Then, Neal's jumper, short, Johnny Dawkins rebound, and that sealed the victory for Coach K and company. Dawkins with a hug, and Mark Price. And the ACC final, Duke wins it 68-67 in a thriller.
some pretty good players on the floor. Hey, didn't Duke play like 40 games yeah, that they year? Did. They did. They played the preseason NIT. And right now... 37 wins for Coach K, the most anybody's ever had in a regular season. Uh, Bobby Crimmins with a tough decision defensively. He's going to have to decide whether to keep trapping Bob, uh, Danny Furry because Danny's finding people. On the offensive end, I think he's got to get it into Tom Hammonds. Duke hitting 51, or Duke is hitting 71% in the second half. Georgia Tech 57%. Look at the two guys working on the box, Furry and Hammonds. Two point lead for Georgia Tech. Scott penetrates. Foul on Smith. Well, that's a nice inside outside combo, isn't it? Then is Scott able to shoot it and now showing that ability to bounce. And of course, Tommy Ham is down on the box attracting the inside defense. Look at how hard this is. This isn't easy. Three quarter. Now you step in front and look at the offensive man trying to hold off. And it's not over until the shot is gathered. Continuation. You can't relax on the day. An 83% free throw shooter, Dennis Scott, two for two on the night. His mom, somewhere in this crowd of 9,200 plus, drove all the way from Weston, Virginia, to be here. Hey, up in West Seneca, New York, there's a big Georgia Tech fan, Jack Buchanan, is watching tonight. He knows almost as much about Georgia Tech basketball as Bobby does. Good, <laughs> good friend of the coaches. Now they need a good run with Paul Brown defensively in there. They got two guards covered. I think they got to get it into Ferry. And I'll tell you what. And what? They didn't double up though. I was curious to see. So now the dilemma. Who beats you? If you double up, Danny Ferry dumps it off. If you don't, he beats you on his own. 24 points for the 6'10 senior Danny Ferry. 24 of Duke 68. Well, that's a guy you want handling the ball, huh, Mo Britton? With 2.10 left, absolutely. If you do, I mean. <laughs> Oliver down low. Scott will take the three-pointer and drills it home. That was a big goal. Five points. Major league jump shot. Dennis Scott with 16 now. Barry will answer that with a soft one-handed turnaround. And Britton with a big board. 1.40 to go. Tech leads it by five. There's the screen down for Scott. Boy, Furry doing a good job on Tom Hammonds. Smith, another foul for reaching in. Now you can't reach in with your hands. You got to move the legs to get in position. Of course, Smith was just burned for the long jump shot. He didn't want it to happen again. So he's caught in between. Abdul Nabi will get a rest, and Scott, who's got 16, goes back to the stripe again. 127 to go. of 22 from the line. No fouls. You wonder why he's great. He got them to forget about football down in this city, didn't he? His first college job at Point Park College in Pittsburgh. Then an assistant coach at South Carolina in 72. At age 27, he took over at Appalachian State, the youngest Division I head coach. He's been at Tech since 81. And right now, he's about 80 seconds away from upsetting a 12th-ranked team and a turnover. That's number 22 against the Blue Devils. Danny Furry tried to hold his pivot foot after he faked with the ball. What a tough time for that to be called. They got a used clock now. Duke's going to have to gamble the giveaway. There's Snyder with a reach around, and Carl Brown will get the one and one. 62% free throw shooter. Not a bad foul. Quick. Stop the clock. Perhaps that man on the verge of losing four of his last five games, and they beat a Clemson club, Bill, missing a lot of starters Decimated. out That's of the right. one, one game suspension. How wild is this league with Clemson taking care of Carolina with everybody back? 
We should get our ACC tournament tickets now. <laughs> Tip up, out of the hole, and Smith with the board. 71 seconds left. They're going to score quickly. Get There's the Snyder on a and drive. One. And no Ooh. foul before the shot called on Brown. Oh, I would beg for that one if I were the Duke bench. Mike's doing a little more than begging. Well, that's what they need from Quinn Snyder. Good penetration. And right here, well, I'll tell you, that's awfully close to a three. That continuation call, but great concentration and the kiss. But, of course, if he makes the two, they don't have to waste the time out. They can get their pressure D set up. Quinn Snyder, five points in the first half. Duke hitting only 10 of 20. Now it's 10 of 21 from the line. That's a major story of this game. Look at this. Out of bounds. Or not, they got Danny Perry. Not a bad idea, though. Try for the steal right away. Make sure you make contact. And the raspberry cheers of 9,200 Georgia Tech fans. What a big victory this will be for that man. Bobby Cremins needed this victory to help turn the program around this year and be competitive in the ACC. This just reinforces everybody's thinking in basketball that any club can get to the Final Four and win it. And there's so many teams that are capable. If you relax a little, clubs are going to beat you. Tech, inside a minute, leads by seven from three-point range. Oh! oh! And they get the timeout. Oh! The 27th point by Danny Ferry. That was from 25 feet out. He had to worry about a backcourt violation on that one. Uh, you need to score. You got to get your press set so you take the timeout. Snyder uses a little brush here. And then when he doesn't have it, responds. Look how far out. This is a 25-footer. And that's from your 6'9 inside player. Pretty impressive. From the man that leads the ACC in scoring with a just under 22-point average, he's got 27 tonight, and he only had five at halftime. 22 points in the second half. Timeouts remaining right there, one for Bobby Cremins, none for Coach K. And for Duke, after tonight, they will have played all six ACC opponents. They, of course, will come back here to Atlanta for the ACC tournament this year. And how about that Sunday date against Digger at Notre Dame? Mm -hmm. Not an easy place to play either. Now, in that timeout, Duke had to discuss everything they may do after a goal. If they make the steal, who do they want to ban? There were a lot of things done. And, of course, Tech, on the other hand, has to try and keep the ball. Oh, look at this play. Oliver almost pushed Schneider. There was no almost. He did. He got away yeah, with it. He did. And then the reaching in foul on Henderson. Oh, that wasn't a good play by Brian Oliver. Coach K says, hey, where's the pushing foul on that play? Now, that's worked on. That's what it was discussed in the timeout. Try and get in front of him and draw the charge. the wrong man to follow. Well, none of them terrible. They're all pretty they really aren't. And certainly not tonight. Long time to miss. They got to push the ball up. Four-point deficit for the Blue Devils. They're three for three from three-point range here in the second half. Deflected by Oliver. Hammonds came up with it. Got to give one. And better hurry. Scott wants to be fouled. Dennis Scott, an 83% free throw shooter. That's four on Danny Ferrer. I'd rather the ball pass quickly, pop it around, run the clock off. Dennis Scott showing great confidence in his ability to make pressure free throws. If this score stands, that man goes to 3-2 and two in the ACC. Bobby Cremins 13-6 and six overall. The Blue Devils would fall to 14-4, and 4-4 four, four and four in the ACC. And Duke would have lost four of their last five to North Carolina, to Wake Forest, to North Carolina State. And I think that might ice it, perhaps as far as Georgia Tech is concerned. points for Dennis Scott. 
Tech does not want to foul. Forced them into tough shots like this and rebound. Snyder off the mark. They need three pointers. Kubek. Oh! Kubek from 23 feet. They almost called timeout, then they realized they didn't have any. Stopped the clock right away. Boy, good use right now of their defense by Duke. At 27, he was the youngest Division I head coach when he took over at Appalachia State. And that's five on Danny Ferry. 27 points, five in the first half. A lot of minutes for a man coming back from a back injury. Great leadership qualities. Down the stretch, the go-to guy. The All-American, and what an All-American effort tonight. 15 seconds to go. Hammonds at the line. Seven points in the first half. He's added eight in the second. And the Georgia Tech All-American. Four for four from the line tonight. Boy, is he a cool customer. He sure is. Very impressed tonight. <laughs> Snyder takes it inside, kisses it off the glass. He's got nine. giveaway just to stop the clock they're on their feet each other when that man played for South Carolina and Mike played for Army. A great game for Bill Raftery. I'm Jim Kelly. Good night from Atlanta.